Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us on iTunes right now, go ahead and leave a five-star review. I appreciate all the lovely reviews you guys have left so far. Um, I want to let you guys know I'm doing stand-up. I'm not just a person in your phone or in your computer. I do stand-up. I'm going to be in New Jersey uh, at Bird and Betty's in Beach Haven, August 12th. Uh, and then I'm heading to New Orleans for August 13th and 14th. I'll be at the Comedy House down there. I think that's a new theater that's just opened up. And then uh, what is after that? I will be heading back to Vegas with Comedians of the Compound September 10th and 11th. And then back to Texas, headlining Hyenas in Dallas September 17th and 18th. Then I'll be back with Comedians of the Compound in New Jersey. We're doing a stadium in Lakewood. Uh, October 16th. And then I'm so excited to go to California. Um, going to be doing some shows in Santa Monica, October 22nd and 23rd. And I've actually never announced this yet, but uh, my good buddy, uh, Bridget Fetissy is going to be uh, featuring for me down there. So I'm so thrilled to be performing with her. She is super fun. Um, and tickets and all that stuff uh, are available on my website, chrissymayer.com. Thank you, guys. Uh, so excited to have this gal on the podcast today. You may know her from Wet Spot. Um, she she hasn't done this podcast before, but she's on Wet Spot a bunch. So, and, and I just love her to death. Um, she's a former Starbucks employee. We're going to talk about her time at Starbucks. Uh, she's a great gal. Elsa Jean. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good, 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 good. I love your outfit. I love, I was just telling Elsa before we went live, you would be amazed how many people whose job it is uh, to go on camera and they just don't have a good setup. And like your setup is great. You look good. You sound good. Thanks. Good. I mean, I'm, I have secondhand embarrassment if they don't know how to like get their shit together. <laughs> It's wild. It's wild. Like I just this week, I think I was doing, he was like a guy in media and I was like, I don't think his microphone is plugged in. Like, I don't think it's working. <laughs> so do you, do you, do you like like putting together backgrounds? Like, I, I think that's something, I think you're kind of aesthetically in touch because just from like your Instagram is gorgeous. Like I think you have an, you definitely have a decorative eye. Thank you. I mean, I, I do enjoy it. And it wasn't until like the last year or so, but I do really like I got my little bar set up and stuff. And my That's I like cute. plants and um, more of a like natural looking like wood, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like could do it. all kinds, though. Yeah. <laughs> Like I had a real learning curve with plants because um, you're just like, OK, I'll just buy an indoor plant. How hard could it be? But like it's pretty heartbreaking, like when your indoor plant dies or it starts to get crusty, like <laughs> I had this bamboo plant for like a year and then I learned it wasn't even bamboo. I was like, what's wrong with me? Why what? not? <laughs> it was like not a bamboo plant. I thought it was. It was like a couple stalks like sitting in a <laughs> cup with rocks in it. And um, sometimes you overwater it. And then I got this app where you just literally take a picture of it and it tells you um, like what's what's wrong with the plant, what's wrong with you. <laughs> what yeah, you need to basically, do. what's yeah. wrong with you? My I have a big plant that just started dying. But honestly, my excuse is that you know how there was that hurricane or whatever it was called. Uh, there was no sun, so my plant started to die off. <laughs> but it wasn't my fault. <laughs> Yeah, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Um, are you in Never New is. York? Are you in New York, Elsa? Or you're kind of just like bi coastal all around? I'm in New York. I'm. I refuse to leave. <laughs> I'm here for I love forever. This. There's definitely a part of me that really feels you on that. And there was a mass exodus from New York over the last year and a half. And of course, any of your friends who live outside of Newark would be like, yeah, this is why you have to move out. It sucks. It's hopeless. It's never coming back. But it's mm -hmm. like, oh, man, like I remember I had my first slice of pizza in like six months, like real New York slice of pizza in like six months. And I was like, oh, I was like, how could I leave you? I can't do it. Like. I, I know it, there's some issues and, you know, it's not how it used to be, but I believe in it. It always comes back. I don't care what anyone says. It always comes back. Yeah. I'm going to stay. How, how, how long have you lived in New York for? 
just a year full time, but I was back and mm-hmm. forth for probably five years because I used to live in LA, but it was basically 50 50. How do you like New York compared to LA? I hate LA, <laughs> but I could rant about that all day. The only thing that's nice is the weather. That's it. Yeah. Everything else sucks. And I, I always wonder, like, oh, is LA in much worse shape than New York? Um, I don't know. I feel like it kind of is. I just feel like there's way more homeless in LA and I just feel so like true. The, the LA entertainment industry is a bit, is a bit like in worse shape here. It's like, okay, eventually, okay. Broadway is coming back. Um, but I don't know. I, I kind of always have like enjoyed hating on LA too, but you've actually lived there. So yeah. how do you compare I, them? I, I mean, I could hate on them all day. I just feel, and I, I, I was almost like, cause I moved there so young. So I feel like it was just like, the beginning of my adulthood there so i feel like i ha- i am allowed to hate on them the people are so ridiculous and i know like, new yorkers are ridiculous in their own way but like they just can't get their their shit together with anything like i'll text people and and they'll be like oh i'm just waking up and i'm like it's 1 p.m i i <laughs> what Like, and they'll go to bed at, like, 10 and sleep until 1 p.m. And then they'll be like, oh, I guess I'll go get my vegan nachos now. And and then snap that I'm working out, but not really. It's obnoxious. Yeah, it is. And, like, I'm somebody who doesn't have, like, a standard job. I don't make a living in, like, a standard way. But I just don't think – there's something nice about, like, getting up in the morning and, like, having a routine and – you don't, I, I don't think you need to like kind of flaunt it into everybody's the, the way that you're talking about, like this particular LA way of like flaunting your like cool, uh, <laughs> non traditional lifestyle. Yeah, it's laziness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have, I, I mean, I have a job, I guess, you know, I'm self employed. So, yes, you're a small business owner. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Definitely a business owner for sure. But, <laughs> I uh, I can't do the, I get up at, at 7.30, 8 o'clock. I feel depressed if I get up any later. Uh, I just don't, I don't see that life for me. So I had to leave. And I use the, the pandemic as an excuse because it's hard to leave the, the adult industry. Like if, if you want to shoot, you have to be in LA kind of. And mm-hmm. once it shut down, I was like, oh, this is, sorry guys. Uh, I, I gotta go now, no one's shooting. And that's when you moved full time to New York. Yes. Is it because LA is kind of like the the porn central, or is it because of like proximity to other cities that you can work, like Vegas, that are also have a lot of work? I think it's both. Um, I mean, you could shoot in in Miami, but LA has more of the professional or California. I know there's certain like all over, but like LA and Vegas, they have more of a professional. Um, industry like I almost see Miami as like a different adult industry if that makes any sense Miami to me seems more like just a such a party city it's just like like who lives in Miami it's like every time I see news about Miami it's like some wild fight or like something crazy is going on I know I tried to live there um for like two months when nothing was going on in New York and I was like I think I'd rather stay in like my tiny apartment and not go anywhere um how did you shift your like it sounds like you've always had a pretty good work ethic but how did you shift your either your schedule or or the way you worked like over the pandemic um i guess i mean i just like to keep myself busy i i i did enjoy that Like I could take a little bit more of a break because of the pandemic because I did like go so hard from like very early teen. So I I had to stop myself from being a little bit lazy with content. And you could only do so much content in your apartment. So, I mean, it was hard for sure. Now it's like we've seen, (laughs) we've seen you see what these walls look like yeah yeah exactly exactly so I tried to like go to Miami and shoot and you know and and all that kind of stuff but I was like I think it's just better for me to the fans like you when you're happy so if that's Mm. the same wall it's the same wall they don't want you they can tell I swear 
That's uh, that's so interesting to me because I, you know, like over the years, like yeah, I've met and worked with a lot of like, um, like adult stars, and sometimes I will talk to someone who I'm like, are they enjoying themselves? Like I, you know, I've always had sometimes you get the feeling like a, you know, the job feels like a job, but that's interesting. Like, will, will you get fans like messaging you or maybe on OnlyFans they'll be like, hey, are you having an off day? Like you think they're pretty perceptive of of where you're at emotionally. Oh, definitely. And I'm, I'm very upfront too. That way they know, you know, so they can expect, I, I wouldn't say I'm bipolar, but I'm bipolar. So I want them to know when I'm having a bad day, that way they can, and they'll be so sweet. Like if you're having a bad day, they will really make you feel better. Most of them will. I mean, there's the ones like the trolls, right? Just on, on Twitter and, and Instagram, but those aren't fans. But I, I do see have seen girls maybe not enjoying themselves too much. And I don't think, I mean, I wouldn't even do that at, at Starbucks. I wouldn't even <laughs> yeah. stay there if I, if I'm not enjoying myself. What do you think is the, like the top cause of, of getting to a place where you're not enjoying yourself? Like, is it burnout or is it a lack of creativity? Yeah, I think it's like, you need to stimulate yourself. And some people don't know how to do that. They think, other people will stimulate them. And I, I, I have to disagree. I think some people are, are more, they like to either be told what to do, or they, you know, like to do whatever they want to do. And I, it takes a while to mature and figure out which one is you. Otherwise, you're just gonna, you could only do the same thing over and over again, before it gets tiring. That's like I said with anything. Do you mean a lot of people wait for someone else to tell them to what to do? Do you mean that like literally, like sexually, or do you mean that from like a creative standpoint? I think I more mean creative. Um, mm-hmm. um, definitely more creative because it's when you get to set, there will be like, oh, here's your outfit or here's your script, and you don't necessarily get to say what role you want to play, and it's super fun to play a different role and to even like you know, get a different name and whatever and work with someone new. But after a while, you want to pick the role that you want to be in. Do you feel like there's anything that you would like love to do or haven't done at this point or like are dying to do anything in particular? Um, I would love to do more like cosplay stuff. And I just ordered a bunch of costumes to do that. It's something I haven't done before. And I know that's like very vanilla, but I've, I've done like every, <laughs> I've done like everything. So that's where I, I, my mind has to go is back down to vanilla. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, cosplay is so cute. I love costumes. Like I would get all about, like, you know, because you're in New York. Every year they have a mermaid parade out on Coney Island. Like I would sew my own mermaid or like a fish costume I made one year. Like you just stick a bunch of hangers and oh. cloth and like it was just so funny. I would make these like big fins. Um, but that's not cosplaying. That's just Yeah. That's just weirdness. I'm that's just, just weirdness. <laughs> yeah. That's just being a weirdo. No, I miss it though. I love would like and it you know, you have to love it to trek all the way down to Coney Island. And then you just like see people who are like covered in paint and they don't even like make costume, but it's all good. Like I definitely miss that. Um, I wonder if that stuff will come back. It has I don't know, to. Have they even had it this year? Probably not. Probably not. It, but those kind of things, they have to come back because that's s- slowly but surely because that's what New York is, is Coney Island's craziness. And, you know, downtown Manhattan's craziness. I went, yeah. I went, where is it? Like on, on Ludlow or I don't even, I don't know um, downtown too much, but whatever, there's one of these streets where it's uh, like where Ludlow House is. It's always like party city. And then I, during the pandemic, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. And then I went there the other day and I was like, yes. A drunk person walking in the street and falling over and all the cars beeping and the <laughs> yeah. person is just laying there and refusing to move. I'm like, that's New York. I miss that too. And I think, and I don't know if this is because uh, they're really just trying to make up revenue, what they've lost over the last year and a half. But I know that they were like toying around with the idea of allowing uh, like some public drinking in certain areas. Like, I don't know if it's like Washington Square or just like certain parks, but I know like I think the block they were like toying with that idea, but he's, he's overall 
I'm like anything they yeah. can do, especially like during the summer to, to get people out and to get people spending money again. Like I have a friend who has a bar on like 46th street and he's like, everything around me is closing. And he's like, mm-hmm. on one hand, like I feel terrible, but like my, my bar is doing pretty good because places just like haven't been hacking it. It's sad. It's really, and, and this is like another topic. I feel like everything has become so politicized in the last year and a half. It's like, you can't even, even somebody with a job that shouldn't be politicized, like, like, like being an adult star or like, you know, I feel like being a dentist or being a doctor, like nobody should care what your politics are. If you, there's so many jobs where it shouldn't matter. If you're a garbage man, you shouldn't know what their politics are. Same thing. Like I kind of a little bit feel like possibly actors, we shouldn't really know. I know that's like such a fine line because I I don't know of a a time when actors weren't outspoken about their political beliefs, but I feel like definitely in the adult industry, it it, people should not uh, even your, even your fans that like love and support you, there should not be a pressure to like let your political beliefs be known because it's, it's so divisive. And I just want to know how how much of that pressure have you felt? Um, You know, I I have never really, um, I've always kept my social media very, uh, well, sometimes it can be dark, but that's just like my dark sense of humor. Yeah. But I always, I, I try to keep, yeah, dark is great. So mm-hmm. I always try to keep it very um, positive and uplifting. So, and, and politics are not like that. So that's why I haven't really been sucked too much into it because it just, it's one, I don't really care. Like too much. Like I care a little bit. You're 22. No I, one should I, expect you to be like fully activated just, into politics. Yeah. No, and I'm and I'm trying my best to follow everything because that's that's my that's my duty as a citizen. But I also I'm never gonna be happy because I work in a very just um, people don't like the adult industry, so it's just hard. And people are not following me to to view my opinion. I, real actors and stuff like that, I, I think they have more, more of, um, more of a, they should do more to, to um, voice their opinions on what's right and not. But um, I can't tweet who I want for president and then upload a video of me sacking a dick right after. It just doesn't work. Like it just, it just doesn't work for me. Do you, do you feel like, and I'm sure, and I, there must be performers that, well, there are performers that do that because they want, it's part of their identity, but why do you feel like that that's not the smartest move? Um, because everyone has their own opinion and I'm one person, so I can't please a million people or millions of people with different opinions. And I know what my opinion is and that's what I'm going to follow. And if I think something's wrong and someone's life's at risk, I'm going to do my best to, to, to prevent that with, you know, who, who's our president. But um, I, I just, I, I'm, I can't please everyone. So if I say I like this or I don't, then I'm, I'm going to make someone angry. And that's, that's definitely a smart um opinion to have because I feel like people like well they'll put it out there and they'll be like oh man I just lost like my some of my biggest fans and uh yeah. they don't realize it till it's too late so it's for for being so young like you have a really good head on your shoulders and you know it's like oh yeah this is just gonna upset certain people um and it's it's hard though it's hard because I feel like there's a lot of expectation well well you need to put it right out there you need to put it in your bio you need you need you know you need everyone demands it all be out there. You got to pick a team. You got to pick a side. And like, it really is okay to, to not publicly pick a team. Yeah. Or you can be part of both teams, you know? Yeah. We're on so, no team. Yeah. Like yeah, sick or of no the team. teams. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let's just do no teams. It's so, do- <laughs> I hate teams. I hate, I hate the team. <laughs> both teams are terrible choices. Yeah. I agree. I'm and, and I mean, I didn't even start caring a little bit about politics until, let's see, maybe three years ago. So uh, I was 34. So it's like, come on. It's like you're 
also it's like let people just like be young too and have fun um maniac monochrome thank you for the super chat no question just supporting another great chat hello chrissy and elsa i see you in the chat too brandy hello to you too oh brandy love are you in the chat do you want to jump oh. on this Ooh, have you worked with brandy I, before elsa i have i have like I can't even count how many times she she might know more than me. I I feel like a good five times that I might be over exaggerating. Oh wow, yeah, Brandy, if you want to jump in this, um, I think I could probably send the link to you if you are interested. So just let me know in the chat. Um, that's really neat. I assume you she was like a milf and you were like um, a daughter or something or yes. a stepdaughter. <laughs> of course, classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, is she gonna jump on? Um, I'm gonna wait and see. Maybe oh, okay. she can text. She can text me if she. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I mean, if she's listening still, yeah, text me, Brandy, or like, yeah, text me and I'll send it to you. She's another uh, one that didn't get sucked into living in LA to shoot. Oh yeah. Well, maybe I don't know if I should say where she lives, but she she didn't get sucked into the LA. Yeah, life. no. She, I think she's. Um, I think she's outspoken about not living in LA. I don't know if she oh, okay. puts it out there where she lives, but I don't think she, yeah. <laughs> You're so cute. You're like, I don't want to dox her by saying she doesn't live <laughs> no, in LA. I, yeah, I know. I, I, I don't want to tell anyone. Sometimes it's not safe. <laughs> yeah. Have you had, um, you know, any crazy stalker action or, or like anything that kind of creeped you out? <laughs> um, lately? I want to say this so bad, but I know it's going to start like a, a huge problem but I have a really bad stalker Ugh. and it is a female and oh, wow okay yeah yeah really bad really bad <laughs> how how very like woke in 2021 you know just I know opportunity stalking going on feminism <laughs> Femin <laughs> yeah oh god man that sucks I it does I I haven't had a stalker per se. The closest I had was a peeping Tom in my last apartment in Williamsburg. And I was on yeah. the ground floor. Terrible. Should have never picked it. If I was in a bad spot. I'm yeah, like, you sure. should have known. There's two reasons uh, not to have ground floors. The rats. <laughs> and oh, my God. Peeping Tom. I, yeah. Thank God I didn't have any rats. But I just was like, I came home after like a night of spots. It was like definitely 11 p.m. or later. And I just like... I don't know. I like to look out the window. So I always have my like windows open. I'm not like a shades drawn person. I just like to have light. Um, but then I was, I'm just like, I like whipped off my shirt. Thank God. I still had like a bra on and I was wearing like pants and I just like laid down on the bed and then I just looked over and I just saw like, <laughs> this, like he was probably the, like the 60 ish year old man. And then it scared the shit out of me. And I like got up and it's like, what do you do? Like, nothing prepares you for this moment. And I'm just like, you know, banging on the window, like, that's gonna solve anything. And then I think a couple times after I'd like walk back, I'd like walk back from the subway. Um, I think he was trying to figure out my schedule. Stop. But thank, thank God I had like the most irregular, erratic schedule. So he wasn't able that's to do really that. That's scary. That I was would kind of see him around. And then now yeah. it's not funny anymore. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's funny ultimately because nothing happened and looking back i'm like wow i'm very flattered you know i was like yeah still got it did he have but, like his you know what out or no you he know was just i looking. couldn't see i couldn't see i, I could just see this because it was like um it wasn't like a long uh like window or anything it just was like chest uh -huh. length but definitely enough to like <laughs> scare you definitely I was, yeah i was scared and then and i think he was kind of a neighbor i think he kind of like lived nearby and i was like man that's such a midwest job. thing to do honestly <laughs> we would have not to be to weird, <laughs> but yeah but not like i i grew up in ohio and like my mom always used to be like keep your windows closed because it was like always a thing to like I know it toms, sounds you know? so like mom come on like nobody does but that and I was, people do that I was shocked you know what yeah. my theory is not to change the subject but about about men sending dick pics it's like the new age of flashing remember how people used to yes with the <laughs> trench coats and like let's separate my happy monday enjoy when your I'm commute and you'd be like god just spilling coffee like wow I didn't expect that <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> One of my friends said it the other day, and I was like, that is, it, that's what it is. It is. It's modern flashing. It's like, you're seeing me, whether you like it or not. Like, just the other day, I had two guys, like, flooding my Instagram messages. Not just one dick pic, Elsa. Not just, like, this is my best look. I'm going with it. It was, like, 20 or so. Like, all every different. All different. All equally terrible angles. Like, didn't bother to shave. Didn't bother to do, like, cute lighting. Didn't bother to set, like, a cute bar behind them or anything. Right. I was, like, I was like, man, I was like at least hire a, a photographer, you know, like send me something. Right. Of, right. It was, yeah, it's overwhelming. And I guess like the exhibitionist in you was like, check it out. Uh, no, don't do like, don't even open up. I used to open up my DMS and I, I don't do it anymore. It's, it can be scary. <laughs> I sometimes do. Right. Cause I'm just like, well, what if uh, somebody gets lost in there, like a friend or someone who's trying to contact me. But again, like, my emails are everywhere. It's it's very obvious True. like how you can get in touch with me for for work and stuff. But it's like, man, yes, having a legit stalker really sucks. It's like, well, what can you do? Like, yeah, you can hire like security and I don't know, maybe just wear a wig. I <laughs> mean, nice. you know, the the way people stalk nowadays is not necessarily like stalkers, I feel like like when I was younger, like, I mean, this is not a stalker, but like when you have like a boyfriend that won't leave you alone and like they just keep coming to your place, like that Someone was like- just my really first, likes you. <laughs> yeah, that was like my first kind of like stalking situations where you're like, go and they don't. But now- Okay, so I, like not giving you space, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you're broken up and they still are stopping by uh, your place. Okay. That's a yes, little yes, stalking. Yes. Um, I remember one time my, this is so random, but my, I dated this guy for a month and I was like 15 and he came into my work and threw this giant teddy bear at me. And he was, it was, the teddy bear was literally the size of me. Why? Why like, do people do that? They're, they're, <laughs> it's like having a dependent. Like when you have a stuffed animal that is like, I don't know, bigger than this, bigger than like body width. No. It's a huge inconvenience. It's like you're, it you're, it's a job. It's like you're now giving something that's going to collect <laughs> dust. It's going to get someone's going to spill food, coffee no. on it. It's going to get dirty. Dog's going to pee on it. Yeah. It's a piece. It's basically a piece of furniture. When someone gives you a gigantic novelty animal, it's like here, have an ottoman. It's like where do I put this? But I was going to say the stalking thing. Um, people now they stalk you through social media of course they can figure out where you're going like i don't post where i am i post where i've been and i know that throws people off a lot of the time but like i'll even i rather post old photos and say throwback than you know than post literally right because it takes two seconds for someone to to figure out where stuff is i've had people call hotels i've had you know um I, i've had it just ridiculous stuff just feel free to use my name as a code name whenever you're staying in a hotel and people be like, why well, I've never heard of her. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, you probably have to do code names. But then yeah. again, if you're if you're just posting where you've been, yeah, you gotta throw people off. Yeah, yeah. So I just post ones I love. The code names don't really and aliasism, I think that's what it's called, doesn't really help once because I posted ones I love, but <laughs> yeah, it can get people, scary. That is I, scary. Especially you, when you're with someone you shouldn't be with. <laughs> <laughs> like an ex, you know? Oh, okay. Okay. Or I, was, I thought you were going to be or like, oh, someone else's man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or I was going to say someone else's man, but I thought I'd keep you're that. Like, it's just for tonight. Relax. <laughs> right. Um, middle age crazy. Thank you for the super chat. Just when I thought Gino and Josh from last night would be the hottest stream visually of the week. Oh, thanks, middle age crazy. Elsa is this Jean. from Twitter? This is from YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Like I streamed all of it, uh, oh, cool. but most of most of the chats come in. Yeah, you stream yard. It's great. It all collects in one place, and I can see like from each chat like where they're watching from. But yeah, like the super chats come from YouTube, and then I re-release it as like a its own episode, like probably That's really Tuesday. Cool. That's it's really fun. Cool. It's fun. It's been an interesting and speaking of middle age crazy, I was good. Your code name on Twitter and people always bring this up for you, like Elsa Fox Old Men Jean, which yeah. always still oh, thanks for the super chat, Wind Trill. Uh it always makes me laugh. And uh it's I'm sure true. you get asked this questions a lot. What 
I know why I kind of sometimes like an older guy, but what are what are your reasons for for liking an older guy? I mean, honestly, it's sexually they know what they're doing. I'm not trying to like like throw any young guys age you know, shame. Yeah, I'm not trying to like age shame, but I just <laughs> feel like older men tend to care more about how you're feeling. And it may be because they can get hard. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but they <laughs> they will take the time to really make sure you feel good. They will take the time to listen because maybe they just weren't listening in the past and they listen to what you want when you are hungry, when you're not, when you're upset, they leave you alone. It's more of a maturity thing. And honestly, they they I've only really dated older men since you know, since I was allowed to date older men and it's just stuck with me. Their appearance wise is more appealing <laughs> to me. Gray hair. Yeah. yeah daddy like, issues. That's yeah. A <laughs> girl same. Yeah. <laughs> like men just take longer to get their shit together. It's just, everybody knows it. What was the biggest like age range difference of someone you've dated? Um, 60s like actually dated or just slept with or more hung out with hung out with 70s 70s 80s <laughs> I know. oh my god was it my dad <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah okay, and you're in your 20s so that's let's see quick math that's 50 years difference wow yeah yeah um, i mean what had a great time. <laughs> What's it like? Yeah, banging a seventy a guy in their seventies. I like it. Like I was having. Well, I tried to have sex with this guy a couple of days ago, and I think he was like thirties. And I, he put it in for like two seconds. I was like, I can't do it. I was like, you are too young. Like I was like, <laughs> I just started laughing. I literally ended it. I was like, you're just too young for me. I. They don't like. I don't want like the, the the life pounded out of me. You know what I mean? In an uncomfortable okay. way. So you need them a little slowed down, like older and slower and not like, yeah. Cause you Passionate. must, even with people, yeah. Even with people you work with, you probably encounter guys that are like Jack Hammery and like not even to shit on male porn stars. They're under immense pressure. Like yeah. I have yeah. kind of the utmost respect for them because that's like more than an Olympic athlete. You're performing under the most pressure. Uh, oh possible. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and that's what, that's what's um, looks better too. It's like fast paced and, you know, and stuff like that. And, but that's not what I want in real life. So um, it's hard to explain that to a younger guy. They just automatically assume that I want to be in doggy for 30 minutes straight. Do you or think it's because Oh, they come so quickly. <laughs> Do you think it's because these younger guys watch a lot of porn? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And with, um, the older, I, with the older guys, maybe they've lived more life and they've like been with more women and they really know what they prefer. I really think that's what it is. It's just maturity, more experience. Um, just I don't have the energy to be like to – and I'm talking about dating, but I don't have the energy to fight all the time. And mm -hmm. I feel like older men have been doing that for so long in so many different marriages and relationships. They, when it comes down to, to like when they're in their fifties and sixties, they don't have the energy to, to, they're just tired. Over. <laughs> yeah. They're just tired. I'm tired too. I don't have like, I just, I don't, I'm not even tired. I just, it's not my, my personality to fight. Yeah. But young guys want to fight. They want to fight hard and then, and then fuck really hard and, that's cool. Are you dating a lot of Dominicans? Who are who are these men that love to fight? <laughs> they love to fight. Like I, they I, seriously, I can't. Um, maybe it's just the kind of guys that I date. They just really love to get me worked up. I, I'm I wonder, just very chill. So I feel yeah, like they you don't are very anything, chill. They don't get anything. What's your sign? A Virgo. You're a Virgo. Yeah, you're chill. You're a chill Virgo. You don't have time for that. I wonder if these guys that you that um um like that you draw in that they do you think they trigger like jealousy? Do you think that that's an underlying issue? Yeah, it's definitely an issue. But it, believe it or not, I have never really dated a guy that's been jealous of 
of my work. They're more jealous of like past boyfriends. Like, wow. but I've never, yeah, weird, right? But I did this one time. I was dating this guy for three years and I lied <laughs> and said that um, I was out with friends and, um, and sorry, you know, if he's listening. Sorry for like, watching. Creeps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the restaurant closed at 10 and I didn't really see had my location, I think through Snapchat or something like that. And he came to the restaurant, but waited outside. And I was with my ex <gasps> that I can't stop seeing, you know? And I was like, well, let's go in this doorway. He has a wife, so I can't go. And I had like a boyfriend at the time, so I couldn't The ex has a wife. The yeah. ex has a wife. So, so I gave him a blow job. Uh, on the sidewalk or like in like a doorway and he watched it the whole time but stayed in his car and then used it against me two weeks later Ew. so I do I know. <laughs> he was like I watched I jerked <laughs> off to it but I'm still really bad <laughs> yeah seriously I feel like yeah. that's what happened like I, I date the, like, like guys are jealous of like exes or just normal guys walking around I guess that makes sense because like to be on board with, with, uh, with being with you, like, of course it's a given they have to be okay with what you do for work. So it's like, yeah, like emotionally you have to really be on like top of the line and the connection's right. got to be there because it's like you have good sex all the time. So it's like, you've got, it's got to be that, or at least probably like decent sex. It's like, okay, it's not going to be like work sex. It's going to be different. Um, but yeah, the, the connection's got to be there gotta be straight and and just straight um communication that's the only way this is gonna turn into like a relationship podcast yes, you know this <laughs> girl that's what i'm here for you have to talk and it's something i still struggle with i'm so bad at asking for what i want i just i'm like yeah. shouldn't you know i'm putting out hints you know yeah right no you have to like say what you want and if you're not getting what you want <laughs> you have this is what my mom taught me and it works you have to say the opposite. <laughs> because oh my God, it. I love your mom. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Here. Don't make me come. Don't ever make me come. Don't do it. Will, and I bet you they will try their hardest. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I swear. Oh, my God. I love it. Hold on. Quickie. Oh, a super chat from. See, I don't understand what currency this is. But thank you, Fab Master, for 250 blow dryer dollars has elsa ever had some shower bonings with a male co-star after shooting a scene if so can she share the most recent and as well as the most memorable that happened fap master look at his face man you can't even just <laughs> i can't even... oh oh wow okay <laughs> oh wow this is a fan. Uh, yeah i don't know if i've ever gotten in the shower with someone after a scene uh, usually we're so exhausted. We're on set for like, I know he wants to hear some like dirty story, but we're usually on set for like 12 hours. And by the time you're done, the guy is really done, you know, <laughs> they're really mm -hmm. done. So, um, yeah, I've like never spent. been spent. Yeah. Yeah. Really spent. I did invite a male talent over once when I was drunk, but that's as close as it's gotten to backing off camera. And it was great. Ooh. Do you know, can we, is it somebody we know? Um, somebody I would have heard of, or is it like more? No, probably not. Probably not. I, okay. I don't even think he shoots anymore. Yeah. Um, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, um, really quick from Steve. We're getting out of that. We're really quick from Steven Suarez. I want to hang at Chrissy someday. What? Oh, boy. He wants to hang? I, he wants to hang me. Jesus. Oh, what? <laughs> I want to hang. And maybe he meant hang out. I think I have my first. I think I have my first stalker, Elsa, that I need to be worried about. I'm gonna Shit. hang Christy someday. I wonder if she knows any male adult film performers who have done gay videos. Wow, these are two very separate thoughts here, Stephen. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be Epstein. Thank you very much. Uh, do I know any adult film performers who have done gay videos? Um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think Nathan, what's his face? I don't, I forget his last Nathan Bronson. I kind of, I think he dabbles. Yeah. I really feel like it, it, to me, it seems like being uh, like a male porn star. It's like, you kind of have to be okay being bisexual. I, I just feel like there's not as much work. If that's a hard um, no for you. I, 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 
I think it's a, a, a new time and it's, you know, people, the industry is changing. You're, you can do, as long as it's not illegal and you're being respectful um, towards people's health and, you know, mental state, you do whatever you want. But yeah. there's plenty of people who, you know, go back and forth. Yeah. Um, I think I was doing, oh, right. This was the last stream I did with Brandy Love and uh, Eva Lovia. Um, she said there's some kind of law that um, if a performer, like, does, uh, like, if a guy performer, like, does scenes with another guy that they don't have to report if they're HIV positive. There was, like, some kind of loophole type thing that blew me away. And I was like, oh, I can see how that would be a legit concern really um, for folks who don't want to work with somebody because i think it was tying back to um, what happened with august ames she wouldn't okay she didn't want to work with somebody with a guy who had um done like gay scenes because mm -hmm. so, it was like a health concern but right but obviously the woke mob came after her and was like oh you're homophobic and she's like no this is just a health concern so it's crazy and you gotta be uh I didn't know there Careful. was a, like a, maybe it's like an industry law, not necessarily like a, um, actual law. Does yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. 200 <laughs> watt studio. Elsa, I feel I'm old enough for you. My member is wrinkly for your pleasure. Oh. Yeah. How old is he? <laughs> how, yeah. How, <laughs> how old are you? 200 watt? Are you in the seventies? Uh, yeah. Imagine it's my dad and he just figured out YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing with old guys is they don't have social media usually. And if they do, it's just Facebook or they don't know how to use it. So you don't need to like really pay attention because they just don't know. They're not over there sending dick pics to random yeah. girls. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, one more from Cece Thornhale. Chrissy, one of your Friday Night Tight fans here. Hello, hello. Elsa, new to following you, but quickly becoming a fan of your work. Keep up the great work, ladies. Thank you. Is that an octopus? Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I love these. These are very oh, my unique. <laughs> they're fun. It's cute. It's like it pops up and it's like, boop. Um, it's really, really fun. Um, okay, so we talked about older men. I remember I was listening to this episode you did uh, on the Two Onions podcast with Danny Daniels and her husband, Vic. I did it uh, months ago. I don't know if they're still doing it. I think they – oh, they moved. They moved to Florida, didn't yeah. they? Um, and, and you were joking. You're like – they were, they were mentioning a tweet you had put out, like, I just want to fuck Donald Trump already and get famous, and I laughed yeah. so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I mean, like – makes me sound shallow he's but not like, awful looking i mean the I, hair you could get over the that. hair huh? I, just let it go like you don't need to you just just if you're balding just let it go there's women like me who natural is the best you don't need to dye it you don't need to brush it you know right his hairline starts natural. here so it's tough so it's got to be like you know yeah like more of a bang kind of thing yeah or no he's he brushes it back I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he does kind of, he does do a brush back, a comb back instead of a comb over. I just like when the wind hits it and it's a whole other Oh, animal, yeah. Literally. Oh, <laughs> literally. yeah. <laughs> and like Trump is, Trump is tall. He's like six, he's definitely at least six foot tall. So that's a plus. Think? Yeah, I think, think, I think for I sure just like aggressive foot. men. I just like aggressive, like dominant men that say whatever they want to say and it doesn't better <laughs> yeah there's something really kind of like manly and masculine about that i say this all the time i'd rather have toxic masculinity than no masculinity like it's just and there's nothing wrong with like uh and this thing is like not every guy is the most masculine guy totally fine but if you are that way it's okay to embrace who you really mm -hmm. are and embrace your strengths mm -hmm. and like like women who are more feminine totally dig that so for guys that right. are listening don't ever feel pressured to like, right. I don't know, soften up. Yeah, I'm not a feminist. You don't need to soften up for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steven Suarez back. Hang with. Oh, whew, thank God. Hang yeah, that's with. what I thought. I want to <laughs> hang you. <laughs> hang with. And I'm familiar with, uh, with one guy that did many videos. He was banished from the industry for supporting Trump. His stage name is Jake Porter. Oh, wow. I've never heard of wow. Jake Porter. Have you? No, but I also um, 
haven't I I shoot with the same people I like I like to shoot with the same people it's almost like having like work relationships with people you know I'm excited to see the same scene partners how many people are in your pen like oh I have like I have probably 30 like it's very there's not many people in including girls um I, there's not many people that aren't on it, but I do. If I get to pick, I tend to pick the same. Like I've worked with brands like yeah. a handful of times. I work, you know, like that's what I like. <laughs> same people. Brandy's great. Good energy. <laughs> she has the best energy. She's just like, uh, she's sweet and she's very genuine. She's she's not. Uh, she doesn't come across like fake at all. No. <laughs> and okay, I this is something that actually uh my boyfriend told me about but i've heard it from a couple other like fans as well that there's something going around called like a it's like a it's actually a scam but like some adult stars will do this and it's called like fuck a fan and then maybe they'll i don't know if they do crowdsourcing or what or they make it look like they're picking a random fan that they're gonna bang oh. but really it's like a predetermined the probably. guy that they were already gonna work with have you heard probably of yeah i know this? I know there was a company called, uh, and it's not around. I think they moved to Europe. They were doing a Faka fan thing, and I don't think it was legit. I think it was like, like guys knew male talents, and they'd be like almost like their first scene. They would be the fan. Um, I've never done a Faka fan because um, I think there's like it's almost like most like only fans and when Snapchat was a thing, it's against their guidelines to do like a fuck a fan type of thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I know for sure only fans in Snapchat it's against their their guidelines. So I really try to follow the guidelines because I want to get kicked off. But I really um I fuck fans all the time. I don't need to like broadcast <laughs> and like do a raffle. <laughs> get out. Number twenty seven. Um yeah. I'm- how do they mostly do they just reach out on social media or do you kind of like them too do you ever make the first move yeah i mean it's more like um honestly i've only really done it with uh people that live in new york so they'll like hit me up and they'll be like i live in new york blah 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 and i'll go out to lunch and whatever i've I've only done it like 10 times or whatever yeah yeah Yeah, not like too many nothing crazy but yeah if they're like good looking and like good personality if it's someone that i would have fucked me not a bar i'll do it yeah yeah that makes sense yeah oh it's uncle <laughs> bones uncle bones i am 62 elsa two reasons to come to new york you and chrissy mayer oh oh maybe we'll meet him at a show one of your shows yes <laughs> uncle bones i gotta yeah, come bring that 62 year old dick on over <laughs> Yes, definitely. Um, when is my next show in New York? I'm I'm doing some stuff in Jersey. I mean, you're going to be on Wet Spot. Um, I think uh, I think so. This co- upcoming second? Monday, second, yeah, thing? August second. <laughs> and I was like, I hope you didn't forget. Because uh, no. sometimes I don't I don't follow up. But yeah, August second <laughs> is Wet Spot's 100th episode. So oh, I'm very nice. very excited. It's going to be like a party. I'm going to get a cake. I'm going to get balloons. Um, I have Who's a all going to be there? Uh, well thank you for asking i'm in the midst of putting it together but it's gonna be pretty wild okay you um harley dean i don't know if you know her victoria june i think it's like these are my like new york gals um and then and then um a couple of comics i don't know if you know them barbs who's kind of like a regular on the show I think johnny hollywood (laughs) that is a name that sounds like a porn star but he's not i know uh (laughs) And Matt Moran, who's who's done the show a couple times before. So I think it'll be good. And uh, yeah, if there's anybody else like that you know in New York um, that I should hit up. I'll, I'll, I'll a lot of girls party. come to – yeah, a lot of girls come to visit and stuff. So if I hear of any names that, you know, aren't – aren't, I think it's nice to have people that don't live here be on it, you know, that way you can – Yeah. So August is like a popular time for – vacations here oh okay okay yeah. awesome do 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 fuck google too elsa is great love her liquor stand wow Ooh. that almost sound really dirty but i appreciate <laughs> it really yeah, is it's, like it it's classy <laughs> and i have a lot on it what do you like to drink 
I like to drink um, cabs mainly, and I keep like a whiskey here and there for um, visitors. For men. For men. (laughs) For old Um, men, because old men love whiskey. I figured you it know, out. <laughs> yeah, scotch and stuff. I use. I just finished up the scotch, but I usually keep like a bottle of Lagavulin because I like when a guy drinks that and I can smell it. Is Ooh. that you know what I mean? Like, have you ever no, smelled like really strong? Yeah. yeah, it's hot, right? Most girls don't hot. like it, but it's I think manly. It's hot. Manly, yeah, exactly. So she's just like a dusty old liquor bottle. Like, yeah, the more dust, yeah. the better. <laughs> Brian. Maybe a cigar. Yes, us. Oh, cigars. Yeah, I. I mean, I don't like cigarettes, but like a guy smoking a cigar is hot, and like all my male comedian friends smoke cigars. So I hope they're not hearing this and feeling away. Um, oh, Brian, yeah. as have you ever told your on-screen partner that your cervix is sore and go easy, but just plow ahead? All right, Brian. <laughs> Is this a serious question? This, this, yes, this is a man. This is a man. He doesn't have female parts. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't even think my cervix has been sore. But what do I know? Um, I think if anything, like, I mean, yeah, I, but I've done that in real life also. Like, if you're, you know, if the it happens, is big, it's yeah. big. Yeah, like you, some you have to go more gentle. So yes, I have said that. Before. I've never had that's the first time I've ever had that question. I've done a lot of Q and A's and not that this is a Q and A, but I've done a <laughs> lot of questions and, and that's, that's what I'm gonna say next time. I'd be like, slow down, my cervix is sore. What? <laughs> yeah. How- two hundred watts two hundred watts studio is back. Wait, what were you gonna say, Elsa? I was gonna say how unattractive to be like my cervix. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you're like a nursing student, like that's what you would say in bed. Be like, actually, uh, my cervix is sore and you have to move. Yeah, watch out for my labia. Um, 200 Watt Studio. Elsa, you like sushi? Come to SoCal, sweetheart. Okay, now some thirst is coming out. (laughs) Right. Um, I love sushi, but I'm allergic to avocado, so I have to be very careful to go to sushi places because it's smothered everywhere yeah donald trump is in the chat oh Oh, hell yeah donald trump says hello (laughs) me (laughs) can i come i'm gonna come have you seen that elsa that like viral uh little clip of of, like it's kamala going do not come like it's about the border she's like do not come and then they then trump is like i'm gonna come (laughs) yeah fucking funniest thing ever i'll have to watch it gotta love trump i miss him i miss him every day even though he's still with us um do you feel like but he's dead <laughs> yeah, i know i know I'm like god rest his soul um i remember because i was just listening to that that episode where you were doing with danny daniels and i think it was before you had done your your first anal with tushy and you're talking about like i haven't done it yet i haven't done it yet do you feel like performers feel pressured into doing it if they you know go a few years without you know venturing into that um Yes and no. I think I I waited until I wanted to do it. And I probably even, I don't know if I had it planned when I was, it couldn't have been because it's been a few years since I was on her podcast. But I, I, I waited and I was like, that's one thing I told myself. It's like I had goals and it was like, I'm not until I'm ready to do that. And I also pride myself on doing things that I want to do. Like I said earlier, they can tell. So I don't want to like, do an anal scene and them know that I don't like it. So I waited until it felt good. Um, now I do for the it people, all the time. I'm just now you do it all the time for the people out there who are like, "Uh, God, like maybe some women in this very podcast that like the last time they did anal, it was like not so great." I don't know. Are there tips? I I feel like I mean, when I was talking to Victoria June, she was like, "No, you start with a butt plug and then you like kind of like." build up to it or maybe like you graduate to it i don't know she's like you yeah. just walk around with one in there and i just was like all right that would be a day to wear pants because you right know, if you're wearing or a underwear. dress you don't want it to just fall out <laughs> yeah yeah well it doesn't you sneeze. It, it doesn't just like kind of fall out but um and everyone's different like i didn't walk around with a butt plug in like it doesn't okay. yeah like i mean <laughs> some people are just tighter <laughs> do you start with a guy that is smaller 
and then like graduate up to like because i mean are there any guys even in porn who have small dicks i is that a dumb question um there might be a few uh <laughs> I, I, you know we're not gonna shout them out I mean. not sense <laughs> that subject is um yeah, there might be a few. Um, yeah, you can definitely slowly work up to it. But it's all about relaxing. I feel like if you can put just about anything in there if you relax and don't tense yourself up. Some okay. muscle, right? <laughs> or okay. it stretches. That's, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna work on it also. I'm Are you writing it. that down for later? <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm writing it down. Yeah, I mean like my boyfriend now has expressed no interest and now I'm starting to be like You wanna try? Yeah. Now I'm kind of like, hmm, well, <laughs> it's, it's weird that like part of me wants to do it because he's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But also my my suggestion is to do a spoon first um, and you be the one that moves back and forth. Not yeah. don't go like straight into dogging. Just let him like, you know, because that it's going to scar you. Um, yeah, a position, I'm, a position where to... you could do the work, but not cowgirl because um, that could end really badly. Really, wait a second. So, Gra just the gravity can end bad. You like, could snap it. You could it's... hurt. You could hurt someone's penis could... that way. Or you could poop. Or you could poop. Oh my god! Yeah. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> right, because like I've been told, like, like it's a process. You gotta yeah. like, drink a bunch of stuff. There's like a. Mm -hmm. Like butthole prep, but like, like yeah, a definitely. juice cleanse or something. Um, some girls do. Everyone's different. I just eat air because that's literally the only thing that will save you in the end. <laughs> I just eat air. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen D for four ninety nine pounds euro something. Chrissy, you were hilarious on Friday Night Tights. Also, ever had a shoot with a script that would be fun to do without the naughty scenes? Oh, you mean like, um, like just acting? Oh, okay. So you had, have you ever had a script that was like so good that it would, you would have enjoyed it even without the sex? Yeah, honestly, like not to keep talking about my showcase, but it was filmed like a, like a movie. Like it really was filmed so well and so detailed. And I really did enjoy doing the acting. And maybe that's because they did have me pick um, a lot of what I wanted to, to do in it. Of course, my my one of my guys was a married married man man and i Ooh. you know yeah so that one was really really fun and there was different like little because it's multiple scenes but um there was different scenarios but all one scenario okay was this and you're talking yeah. about toshi was the showcase yeah yeah okay. yeah. yeah they're classy that's a they're, yeah very classy the out some I mean, I'm going to sound like a girl, but the outfits, the jewelry, you know, that's that's what really makes me feel good about myself is if I have a nice dress on, earrings. Oh, my God. It's, yeah. done well. it's like you forget. It's like I think a lot of gals probably forgot over the last year. It's like, yeah, go ahead and just like get dressed up like for yourself. It makes such a difference. Like if you look really good, does. you feel good. It really does. Like if you're ever feeling down, guys and 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 girls like get up and like, it, I know it's hard, but get up and like, guys, I guess brush your hair. I don't know what they do. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is run a comb through your hair. Yeah, put some gel in there. Yeah. But for me, even if I don't plan on going anywhere, if I even put just like a tinted lotion on that makes my skin Ooh. look nice, I'll be like, oh, it's like, I, I can go out now. It's today's the yeah. day. <laughs> Even like that dress is cute. Like, I mean, I feel like I that's have so like, many. A slip dress. I love slip dresses. Yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have to wear? Do you wear just like a, a strapless bra under that, or like some of them don't, or you just do pasties, or it depends. Um, I just, I just free the nipple. I just let yeah, it, <laughs> let it free. I just be, let them go. Let them run around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let them tire themselves out. Yeah. What's your favorite, like, go-to outfit that you know is going to, like, make you feel great? I love a good dress that has, like, almost like a fake corset. Not a, tr Ooh. a true corset because that's too tight. But a lot of these dresses, and I order so many of them, I frequently wear them where they're they're tighter, but it's a material where it's almost like um, 
like a spandex. You know how spandexes are like, you know, that stretchy, comfortable where they should yeah, be. Yeah, it's like um not boning per se, but like it's structured. Yeah. So like an and then like a nice like fake corset dress that's you know that's cute. I could yeah, see that's you my like favorite. A, yeah, a vintagey kind of like saloon girl vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, With like a nice like, yeah, right. <laughs> Or like pinup, like pinup classic, like that is going to be flattering on like any chick. Do, do, do. And a good Russell heel. Hall. Oh God, a good heel for sure. But not Man. in New York. <laughs> not in New York. Cause yeah, you gotta be able to like run around run, more like run away. Um, yeah. Russell Hall. Man, I have been going to the wrong Starbucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about your Starbucks career. Was it in Ohio? No, it was in Virginia. Um, I was a stripper in DC and um, my parents were, were like, why do you have so much like cash? It's like, you know, did you see that? Anyway, so mm -hmm. they were like, why do you have so much cash? And I, I was like, um, well, because of the tips at Starbucks. So I went and got a job at Starbucks. It's, I just, right. I don't know. I could have been like I've been a giving waitress. out free whip. Yeah. I could have <laughs> uh, yeah, said anything, but I said Starbucks. So I would work like, um, until three o'clock in the morning as a stripper and then go straight into Starbucks at like six and then work there until like 12 mm. or something like that. Um, it was the, and I was a stripper. Okay. That's not the easiest job. Starbucks was the worst job I've ever had. Starbucks I worked at a truck harder than, stop. Harder than I being a stripper. A, harder than being a stripper, harder than working at a truck stop. Like seriously, I, I, I they, they pay you decent, but they are not a nice company. And I hate mm. to say that. And yeah, maybe it was just where I was at, but they were not nice. Is it? So it's more like how you're treated, not like the complicated drinks that you have to make. Because I would assume <laughs> it's the complicated drinks. I forgot about that. Yeah, no, those can be really hard. And, and people get really antsy about their coffee. Like you go to get a coffee, you need one. Like, no one's just like, oh, I guess I'll get, you know, a chai tea. You, you, you're like, I need a chai tea or whatever. Especially the morning, they would just, people would, if it's not made the same or whatever, so-and-so made it better. Christmas, you work on, they're open every holiday. Aww. So, you, like, people are angry. Some people are angry on Christmas. I remember I worked the Christmas shift, and I was like, I walked out. I had to leave literally <laughs> you're like very like, fucking oh, christmas yeah. oh man people don't realize like how hard it is to work a job that works on a holiday when i was a tour guide at radio city music hall and i would give like tours of of everything and you had to memorize this big thing you had to know all these like random facts and about like the rockets and the animals and the just everything who who made the carpets who did the art and all the bathrooms and um, really? <laughs> it was wild. Yeah. Georgia O'Keeffe did at least one of the bathrooms like that. She just painted a bunch of flowers that looked like vaginas. Like I knew off the bat. I'm like, yeah. You know, Rose. Right. Yeah. Because oh. <laughs> she just paints a lot of like vaginal looking stuff. And um, <laughs> yeah. But what was the point of bringing that up? Yes. I had to work on Thanksgiving and just people don't. I, I was happy for the experience because now i know it's just like anytime you're interacting with somebody who's like working on a holiday it's like oh man overly to be nice. in their shoes yeah overly nice yeah. overly tipping it's because it's rough yeah yeah it's rough it's rough and then now i really appreciate having holidays off like i really appreciate maybe it's just me getting older but i appreciate being with my family and even when i didn't um work holidays um I would always go away and now I'm like, no more of that. Like I want to be with my sisters. And <laughs> Aww. You, how many yeah. sisters do you have? I have two. I'm the middle. Can you tell? Aww. <laughs> do you have middle child syndrome? Honestly, I was the favorite. So no, like Aww. I hate to say that, but I, I, I feel like I'm the favorite and, and my other sisters say it all the time. Like she is the favorite. I, I, I'm the, the spoiled one, not my Aww. little sister. <laughs> do you get any shit from your family about what you do? Believe it or not, my family has never brought it up. Never. Hmm. It's like, I'm, I'm sure it was talked about because I was ghosted from a few family members and they slowly came back over the years. And But after they came back, they they never... The one time it was a maybe, I was feature dancing in, in Florida. I didn't realize my dad had 
moved there and um, <laughs> there was a billboard and he called and he was, and you know how they put your face like really out there. I think it was in lingerie, whatever. Oh and God. oh my God. And he was, he was really, and, and I think I, my little sister was helping me and she lied and was like, oh, she's, we're all just going on vacation. And, and then they, we were tricked into it. They're like, oh yeah. Or is there a billboard that says that she's stripping at blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. Oh my yeah. God. Whoa. Yeah. So what did you use? say to him did you ever like uh, talk it out i was like yeah <laughs> like what you're am like, i supposed to say right right you're just like yeah this is what i do because i didn't yeah. know if like oh you sense weirdness from a family member and then you initiate but it seems like you just kind of just you left yeah. them alone they left you alone i mean i've done it since i've been 18 i'm gonna be 25 so um the hardest thing was was when my family found out i was a stripper i think after that they were just like whatever what's uh, next yeah and you really you were like actually it's much harder to work for starbucks yeah than, seriously yeah. seriously <laughs> yeah oh man be proud mom yeah come on mom. do you face any kind of um well yeah censorship of course like i feel like you've had a couple accounts deleted but like backlash like i've talked to girls who like had their bank accounts closed like have you ever faced anything like that um, no, actually, I, I have not, but believe it or not, I was closing a bank account the other day and they were like kind of refusing to, and I don't know why I think they're just giving me a hard time for closing it. And, mm. um, they want and, your money. <laughs> yeah, I think that was, you know, and then the guy goes and he goes, sorry, we couldn't close your bank account, but I'm a huge fan. I was like, how oh. can you like throw that in? like oh, that god you're like and no you're chad no <laughs> yeah and i was like you're dealing with my like really personal stuff like that's like a doctor almost you know what i mean like it's like really like you have like a lot of my information if you know what's going on and yeah he's like i'm a really big fan sorry we couldn't close oh you. my god he gives like, you sticky money you're like no yeah <laughs> you're like i couldn't open this envelope <laughs> oh, so gross yeah, does that happen? Thing. Does that happen a lot, where you know, people who shouldn't say that they're big fans? Yeah, yeah. It, um, sometimes if they're dealing with something that is de like dealing with my like personal life, I would prefer if they just don't say anything. But if I'm out and about, like I'm, people ask me this all the time. They're like, "Can I come say hi if I ever see you?" Because so many people live here, and I'm like, "Of course!" Like. You know, even if I'm with friends or whatever, but if you're dealing with like any personal information, I prefer if you just don't, because it makes me feel like I can't, you know, tell them what's going on or whatever. Like if I'm dealing with a lawyer, I don't want you to know unless it has to do with whatever's going on. Yeah, I think the guy at the bank it may, it must have broken some kind of confidentiality agreement because right? that's that's that really is not a that's right. that's not professional at all. Right? I was like, like okay, yeah. Oh man. I, I mean, what's the, <laughs> I had to go, I wanted to close my gym cause I moved and they're like, you have to come in person cause they want you to like what, you know, walk in, not do it full of shame. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. Like, Here I am planet fitness. Are you happy? Yeah. I'm quitting. <laughs> like, it's not because I am never going to work out again. It's just cause I moved away. Um, mm -hmm. Oh man. Not similar they, though. <laughs> no. One time I was future dancing and, and, um, these two guys and this girl, they're getting like lap dances, you know, drinking so much. I'm doing shots with them. And I left at like four in the morning and maybe later. And they left way before, like way um, after me. And I know they were wasted. And I left straight to the airport. <laughs> or I grabbed my stuff and I went straight to the airport. I maybe like had a 30 minute. Anyways, long story short, I um, get on the plane in that the flight attendant and the two pilots were the ones I was I was um, partying with. And I don't want to say the airline. <gasps> oh my god! I don't want to say the airline, but they looked wrecked. And I even said to her, "I go, I go, are, are you?" I go, "Hi, remember me?" And she was like stunned, and her hair was like, you know what I mean? Like it was almost like she didn't even brush her hair. Fucking awesome! The flight attendant, so, awesome. so the girl flight attendant, I'm I'm imagining, and like the two yeah. like were the pilots. pilots drinking that drinking, is doing so shots. hot that is so 
freaking cool. Yeah, and then they were like, can we actually get a photo with you? And I, they let me, which I probably shouldn't be saying this, but they let me go in, like, the flying area. The I didn't get the photo, yeah. <laughs> though. I, would, I was like, can I have the photo? And they said no because they would get in trouble, which is fine. I'm not trying Did to. they give you, like, the little wings like they give to kids? You're like, look, well, you're <laughs> no, a junior pilot asked. now. <laughs> <laughs> I should have asked. It was really cool, though, but also really That's unsafe. Awesome. But someone told me that basically <laughs> the, the plane um, – and I don't know if this is true, but they basically fly themselves now. Like they, they basically so. fly themselves. Yeah, pilots, you can show up drunk. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. You know what? Because like we don't hear enough from pilots, like what their lives are like, if they have fun. Like they're I mean, I think I've met two pilots ever and they came to a show of mine once and they seem like very cool guys, but you just like you don't hear about what they're up to very much. But now yeah. we know. They're out getting lap dances and then flying everybody to. to the girl Chicago. was getting lap dances. The flight attendant. That's great. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah. I love that they all go out with each other. Yeah. Right. Right. Until next time. That is like probably one of the coolest stories that I've heard. Yeah. That's really neat. I, I would you, like telling everyone. <laughs> do you get um, like recognized a lot? Have you always been recognized a lot? Has it been more recently? Believe it or not, it's been more recently as I've slowed down. Um, and yeah, it's it's been it's been more recently. I think it's more just the area that I that I live in now. It's just LA is so spread out in a way that and you're, everyone's like, in cars. Yeah, yeah, everyone's in cars. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on the subway. I'm you know doing it like I'm. You're outside here, so um, yeah, all the time. And it, you know what? They actually recognize the dogs more. Oh, yeah, your yeah. little pugs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw. It. Like, did somebody give you those two keychains, or did you get those? Yeah, someone gave me them. Oh, they're, they're so, so cute, cute, right? How old they're are so... they? The um, the tan one named Olivia is seven, and then the black one, uh, she's three, and she her name's Olga. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. That's I know. So cute. Wow, that's so funny. You get recognized for your dogs. Does it ever get to be like too much or annoying or do you feel like you're you can deal? No, they're most of the time they're very, very respectful. I've never really had too too bad of an experience. Um yeah, I really can't think of one. Mm. Unless I'm cool. just blanking. Unless I blocked it out so bad or something. You're like <laughs> other than the stalker. <laughs> yeah, right. If you're listening, cut it out. Get a life. Yeah. Get a hobby. Yeah, seriously. Scram. It's not going to work out. Yeah. It's probably a crush, right? Obvi that's obvious. It must be like some sort of crush. No. Or like jealousy. It's worse. I don't know. It's wor it's jealousy. Yeah. It's yeah. I I oh, can't Lord. I can't give it any energy because then Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, You're smart. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. We're it's, not going to get bad. For okay, me. <laughs> let's think about let's shift to your goals. What are what's coming up for you? What would you what kind of um scenes would you love to do that you Oh yeah, you said cosplaying. Um, yeah. Is there anything other than that that you just that's coming up on the horizon that you would love to eventually do? Um. Well, like professionally, because like the cosplay thing I can do at home. I would eventually, and don't get too excited because there's nothing planned. But this is for the viewers. But they, I want to do a DP. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we would do a DP, but there's nothing planned or anything. So we'll see. Uh, it's just something like I want to experience before I'm dead. You know? would, if you had to pick today, who would you do it with? Oh, gosh. You know, I would actually have to do research because I feel like because of the pandemic, so many people like aren't shooting. Uh, I love um, Mick Blue, um, um, Manuel. Oh, uh, Manuel. Yeah, just I like was the behind him once at a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh yeah, <laughs> at AVN. Oh, at AVN. Yeah, yeah. I tell this story all the time. Yeah, I was like, he was like, I was behind him in Dunkin' Donuts. I was like, oh, Manuel. He was like, hello. Oh <laughs> I was like, ah! yeah, just the old school, you know, um, the old school guy. So like, those would be my two. There was um, what was his name? Um, was it Michael Stefano? He was in my showcase, and he came back and. And he, he was basically only back because he got stuck. He's from like Italy or something like that or Spain. And he um, he got stuck in LA. So he just started shooting. But he was shot forever ago. Um, 
uh, and he was in my showcase, and he does like the best deal. Oh, okay, right. Because I would think if I'm name? doing a DP, I'd be like, all right, you want so specifically like I would be like smaller dick in the back, bigger yeah. dick in the front. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I think they flip back and forth, but whatever works. <laughs> oh my gosh! Right. Exactly. Like, yeah. Until <laughs> I build up. Um, D Manji, D Manjin, I hail from the Dark Council. I as a Sorry. man of science, I appreciate the guests you've had on. Speaking of hail, Elsa, you're freaking awesome. She is freaking awesome. Thanks. One of my absolute <laughs> faves ever. George's Habib for dollars. I don't understand. Is this Dubai dollars? Hey, Chrissy, YouTube recommended you, and now I keep enjoying the episodes. What do you think of porn's effect on the sex lives of young men? Positive or negative? Well, I've never had sex with a young man. Thank God. Um, <laughs> Does he but mean? Yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure he means like, and this is something I've brought up uh, with with guests in the past. I think. Yeah, too young is, is not good. Plus, if you have like addictive tendencies, you can abuse porn just like any other vice. Um, but yeah, Elsa, what do you think? Uh, I mean, like, surely you've, and like, so have I. You, you, we've been with guys where you're like, oh, you watch too much porn and you have enough like real life experience because you just add a touch with what women generally like. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just I, a learning curve. I was going to ask you, like, does he mean like an addict, like, does he mean in like an addictive way or like in a, um, like they just are taught, like uh, porn is over exaggerated. So are they not taught the right things? Because where else are you really supposed to learn except for experience? And that can be embarrassing, right? If you don't yeah. do the right things. And so I do sometimes wonder how much, I think that there should be more sites out there that do more realistic sex. I think that there should be every, you know, if you want to do bondage, whatever, you know, zero to 100, that's great. Mm -hmm. But there should be more zero for, for, for people like that to learn. And, you know, it's, it's, and the the uh, being addicted to it I, I feel that's a problem too but you you like people can get addicted to coca-cola that's how i see it <laughs> oh yeah and that can be really bad for you okay <laughs> yeah possibly worse yeah uh yeah that's true i always think like oh there should be very realistic porn out there you know where the girl just doesn't feel like it and then sends the guys home <laughs> yeah right or like you literally are are um like you just like 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 a dead fish almost you know like how that's that can be realistic like morning sex where you're just laying there and you're just like <laughs> you do you not like porn. morning sex i hate morning sex i feel you because guys generally that's when they're like up and ready but i much prefer it at night because it's like i don't know it's like night is sexier the morning is just like ah time to Ugh. start the day <laughs> yeah I, I can't stand morning sex and Unless it's like hungover afternoon, basically morning sex, and it's kind of okay. Where you just try to like get rid of that hangover. Yeah, but then again, like right now, it's you're the afternoon. Ooh, Russell Hall, I love Dr. Pepper. Okay, that's random. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we were talking about you get addicted to soda. Right. Oh, you know what I'm addicted to? You know what I love? Cushy dreams. I almost forgot to do the the sponsor we are sponsored by cushy dreams they are my go-to for all things high quality cbd i love their joints they come in these great five packs they've got all different blends uh, of indica sativa so if you want a little bit more up or a little bit more relaxed before bed they got relax dream energy create hustle peace um so go to cushydreams.com that's k-u-s-h-y dreams.com at the checkout use promo code cmp to get 20 percent off join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their cbd check out their website um yeah that that code is good for first order second order third order whatever you want um every run is in a small batch best of all it's grown here in the usa Love it. Big fan of the cushy dreams. That was good and organic and not awkward at all. Um, do, great. do you smoke weed? Because you're allowed I to smoke. smoke it outside here. Did you know You that? can, right? It's legal. Yeah. yeah. 
um, or at least it's going to be pretty soon. Yeah, I like I like cushy dreams. Well, I like CBD because you don't get high, so you can you still feel I still feel like calm down, but I'm not like sometimes I get a little if you know if you get too high, you're just like you, I don't really get anything done. But I like to just like relax without being like too relaxed, right? But of course, if it's like the weekend, sure, yeah. But I just I think I've just been working too much lately because I can't remember yeah. last time I just was like fuck it, let me just like put the best time before uh like put my fun before like what i have to do the next day i need to have no. more fun yeah we really need to go out and party hard yes you know? okay my I'm, favorite I'm place board. to go is catch steak <laughs> have you been oh i've never steak? been let's really go. okay let's, let's go. go that's my favorite one of my new faves it's just i took one of my friends here or friends there and she goes um I don't see one bad looking guy in here. Mm, and it's, okay. It's done. We're going there. Yeah. And <laughs> if you like a guys in suits and like are just, they're just already drunk and you know. Oh God. Yeah. Who doesn't love yeah. a man in a suit? That's drunk. Yeah. That's drunk. Yeah. That's the best. Elsa sneaking one in um, 200 watt studio, sneaking another super chat. Thank you so much. Elsa, how do you like your love making? Wait, how do you like your love making life with someone you love? You like the slow, long hours marathon or fast, like a sprint? I feel like she already answered that. Um, I can re answer it <laughs> real quick. I like it slower, slower, lots of passion kissing missionary cowgirl the passionate type of like i don't think i've ever done reverse cowgirl in my personal life <laughs> yeah because it's like uh, every time i've done reverse cowgirl i'm like oh man we got a vacuum like i'm just looking at everything that like needs to be picked yeah up. no so it's I'm, like, distracting I'd, it's distracting. i'd rather turn away from that i'll just be like let me <laughs> right I don't want to see the mess. Um, awesome. Yeah, guys, tune in Monday um, to the Wet Spot on Compound Media at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Elsa will be there for the 100th episode of Wet Spot with a lot of um, awesome guests that have been on over the last couple of years or so. Elsa, anything else you want to plug or mention or promote? Just my um, my social media. I, I have an OnlyFans. I have a Twitter and I have an Instagram. My um, Twitter is Elsa Jean Triple X, and my OnlyFans is Elsa Jean Official. I keep getting knock on wood. I keep getting deleted, so the names change. Oh. But but my my Twitter is here to stay, so you'll see links and posts to other social medias on there. That's easier. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Elsa, yeah. thank you so much for coming thank on. You. It was such a, it's always great to see you and chat and yeah, yeah I guess I'll see you I'll on Monday. See you. Yeah. See you on Monday. <laughs> Bye. 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 Yay.